Let's try it again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, keep that going too. I like that. Can you believe it? The day has finally come. Christ's words have come true. He who was dead is alive. The body that lay in the tomb has been raised. Now, I, I, I already told you this. I readily admit that Christmas is my personal favorite time of year. Uh, bows, music, whatever the, the like. But uh, uh, I can't deny that Easter, without a doubt, is the most significant time in the life of the church. As Paul writes to the Corinthians, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, if Christ didn't rise, that, that is, if he's dead and his body's in the tomb, if Christ didn't rise, our faith means nothing. It's pointless, useless. You got up to come here to church. We call ourselves Christian. We do all of these fluff things in vain. Paul continues, if Christ didn't rise, your faith can't help you, and you are still in your sins. You can't get more direct than that. But Christ has been raised. He does live, which makes this the day of days for the church, for everyone, everywhere. Why? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, man, a few of you already fell asleep. Stay awake for a little bit. Okay. My question for you today, how does this news affect you? Does this news affect you? There are many things in, in life that we encounter that we find unbelievable. I want to give you three examples today. Uh, the first hits pretty close to home. It's, it's pretty uh, personal because when my wife, daughter, and I moved here roughly a year ago, we came from this area. Uh, when many of you saw the pictures in the news and on social media of the Nebraska and Midwest flooding, unbelievable. Not that you didn't actually believe it, but you didn't, I didn't want it to be true. Uh, wish that it weren't the case. Unbelievable in the sense of, ah, oh, the damage is just unthinkable, unbelievable. Second example. The movie Unplanned, if you're familiar with it, hits theaters as the highly charged and controversial topic of the life of the unborn becomes revisited in state legislatures, either leading toward the enacting of, of stricter regulations and heartbeat bills or those celebrating the loosening of, of restrictions, even up till or at birth. In a nation's reaction from either side of the issue, unbelievable. I'll give you a third one, just within the past, I don't know, week or so. After months of an investigation, a report is released regarding presidential conspiracy and collusion with a foreign country. Again, the response on either side of this, unbelievable. So today, when it comes to the resurrection of Christ from the dead, should we be so surprised that there are many who think or even cry, unbelievable. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, a month ago, tomorrow actually, a month ago, results of a survey were released highlighting how the religious nuns or the religiously unaffiliated are now the largest religious group in America. Now, they fudged the numbers a, a little bit because Roman Catholics, evangelicals as a whole, and these religious nuns are all statistically at 23%. 
But the fastest growing, the group that is growing, are these religious nuns, and they're largest among the younger generations. Does that concern you? Because it should. More and more, there are people who consider the concept of a faith, of of God, even more so some dude rising from the dead, unthinkable. So again, I ask you, how does this Easter news affect you? Does this news affect you? Do you act as if it makes a difference in your life? Do you talk as if it makes a difference in your life? Now, if not, I'm not going to pretend that I'm okay with that. But if it doesn't, you're also in good company. Because today I invite you to look at the unbelief of the disciples. Unbelievable. That's what the disciples thought. Jesus' own followers. In Luke's account of the resurrection, he notes how the women are the first to the tomb. I'm going to pick up Luke 24, starting at verse 1. Very early on Sunday morning, the women came to the grave bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled back from the grave. That's what they see when they get there. Then they encounter some angels. They realize what's happening, and they take this news. They bring it back, and they share it with the disciples and the other believers. And what does Luke note about the disciples? I'm going to take you to verse, to verse 11. The apostles thought it was nonsense and wouldn't believe them. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, I'm going to stop for a second. There's a couple of takeaways that that we can walk away with from from this passage of Scripture. The first, obviously, the Easter connection. Get to that in a moment. But second of all, I'd like to point out that this is a message that's also directed primarily to us as men. And now hear me out. Because the women go, figure things out, bring back the news, and share it with the disciples. And you see the reaction that they get. So the message for us as men today I'd like to share is we need to shut our mouths, we need to swallow our pride, and listen to the women in our life. Oh, I got a couple. All right. I wasn't sure with the Lutheran crowd, but all right, there's hope for you yet. All right. But listen, especially if that woman is your wife and your mother, all right, or your mother, I should say. That aside... The, the main takeaway, the Easter connection, the disciples' reaction. Here they are. We spent three years of our lives following this guy. And yeah, we listened to his own predictions that this was going to happen, that this was going to take place, but we didn't think it was actually going to come true. He's risen? That's unbelievable. My goodness. The text is clear. I mean, verse 11. There's, there's no way around it. They didn't believe. Now, we do know that their hearts were changed. In part because Christ, Jesus himself, appeared to them and also the Holy Spirit opened their eyes to see what Christ had promised actually happened. Namely, here we go again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I think I heard the kids the loudest. Yes, keep it going. All right. But instead of, I don't believe it, and pushing it away, the news became, it's unbelievable. As in, amazing, astounding, too good to be true, but it actually is true. And when that realization sets in, When that faith takes root, it has profound effects. Amen? Amen. Now, just look at Peter for an example. I'm going to give you three more from his life. Bold, brash, 
Peter. When Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? He's the first to respond, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter also, when Jesus predicts this weekend's events, his crucifixion, Peter responds in the negative, never, Lord. He doesn't want it to happen. He wants to stop it. And that's when Jesus reprimands him, get behind me, Satan. I well, don't want to be in his shoes. But. And then Thursday night, Jesus' arrest in the garden. Jesus is about to be carted away, and Peter's the one who jumps into action and starts swinging his sword and lops off somebody's ear. He's the first to act. He's the first to speak. But today, initially, he does nothing. Verse 12, then Peter went home amazed at what had happened. Now I grant you, he did go to the tomb in response to the women's message. But we don't hear him say a thing. Now don't get me wrong, preacher... Peter becomes a great preacher and proponent of the resurrection. All you have to do is read the Pentecost account in Acts chapter 2 to verify that. But today, initially, I don't hear anything. He's silent. In fact, he goes home, according to some translations, where he goes away by himself. Which leads me to wonder, is this news unbelievable or is this news unbelievable instead of drawing attention to himself he allows the attention to be on the empty open tomb this time instead of trying to muster up his own words he simply soaks in and contemplates the angels words which are God's words just as Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart at the birth of Jesus some 33 years ago, so too Peter ponders this message. He's changed. The resurrection has a profound impact on him as it does us all. Because the resurrection changes how we act. It changes how we speak. It changes how we think. Here's another example for you. Instead of looking at the Ten Commandments as ten depressing rules from a dictator father, they become a lifestyle change that we want to emulate and to implement, to show our love for God and also our love for one another. Instead of thinking that the world revolves around us, we step back and acknowledgement that God is at the center. Without him, we wouldn't even have the world. But with Christ at the center, the Spirit moves us to put others first before ourselves. Uh, spouse, children, co-workers, neighbors, even enemies. Even enemies. Because it's not about me, it's about Christ. Because of which, it's about them. So the resurrection changes us. And not just how we act, speak, and think. It changes us. It transforms us. That's because Jesus forgives us. He gives life to us. He gives the promise of heaven to us. Jesus' death on the cross one, the forgiveness that we all need. Forgiveness for thinking that we're at the center of the universe. Uh, forgiveness for attacking one another uh, over political controversy or other areas of disagreement. Forgiveness for ultimately our disbelief in who God is or the fact that he lives. Or at least living as if it hasn't happened and as if it doesn't make a difference. But Christ has died. Christ also lives, which means his death was not a fruitless endeavor. He meant what he said. He accomplished what he said. Forgiveness, life, salvation, it's yours. Amen? Amen. And if that doesn't make a difference, I don't know what will. And so once again, 
we revisit the news this time out of Luke of that first Easter morning. Though some would put it forward as such, it's not unbelievable, as in fake news or non-snopes.com verified news. No, it's unbelievable. As in this is too amazing to, to have thought it thinkable, possible, but I'm glad that it is because this is the news that makes an impact. This is the news that changes you, me, everything. This is the news that makes all the difference in the world. Believe it, because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen. Thanks be to God.